But that's just who God put in charge. In 1 Timothy 5, 14, it says the wife is supposed to guide the house. You know, we all hear the joke, well, my husband's the head and I'm the neck that controls the, you know, that's real funny and cute, but that's not biblical. That's right. That's not biblical at all. Supposed to guide the house. That's why I let Beth decorate the house. She'll ask me, what do you think about this color? Or what do you think about these? Uh, painting the room. I said, that's fine. Whatever you want to do. That's fine. Can you paint it red, white, and blue? I don't care. It's, it's hers to decorate. She can do what she wants to. She can put boxes out, cardboard boxes. We'll sit on them if that's what she wants to do. I don't care. Personally. I just do whatever she wants to do in the house. He said, man, she got you whipped. No, I'm just going to pick my battle. I don't care what kind of furniture you have, what color the wall is. It don't matter. I've seen people fight and fuss over the stupidest thing. Same thing in the church. Talking about yes, church. Sir. Yeah. Fight over the, the, the color of the carpet. Well, that's really something to really fight over and leave a church over. Yeah. Yeah. We out knocking on doors over in Wayne's. People left the church because someone took their carpet place. Ooh, that's doctrine. <laughs> that's no doctrine. Someone parked their carpet <laughs> place. Not that they have a sign there. It's just they always park there. Yeah. They've been going there for a long time. Took, a, a, a visitor took their parking place. They got mad left the church. That's, that's crazy. You know, but that's kind of the fusses that husband and wife getting in all the time. Yes, sir. My, my food's cold. Don't even heat it up, stupid. Yeah. <laughs> that's what you got to wait for. Yeah. So I let Beth take care of the house. There's a big difference between a woman and a lady. Amen. There's a big difference. Amen. I got some kin folk back home, and I certainly ain't gonna try it. And I certainly can't do it. <laughs> Maybe we get some of y'all to demonstrate, y'all ladies. Uh, not that y'all do that, I'm sure. But I got some kin folk back home teaching their young teenage daughters how to walk. You know what I mean? You know what I'm talking about? You know, because you don't just normally walk. You gotta walk like a tramp. You know. You know what I'm talking about? I know the guys know what I'm talking about. Yeah, you're not stupid, I know. Teaching her daughter how to twist her rear end so that the guys will look at her. That's wicked. Yes, oh, they're, they're members of an independent fundamental Baptist church, by the way, too. Teaching a son of your class. Uh, teaching your daughter how to twist so that you'll get looked at. Which, you know, they've been through several divorces. Because they have a house, not a home. There's a big difference in a, a lady and a woman. Proverbs 14.1. Hold your place there in Ephesians. Proverbs 14.1. I promise you. Hold your place in Ephesians. Let me read this one verse. Proverbs 14.1. says, Every wise woman buildeth her house. But the foolish plucketh it down with her hand. Now that's a comparison. That word there is a contrast between a wise woman and a foolish woman. A wise woman will build her home and a foolish woman will pluck it down with her hands. And that can apply to a lot of different things, I realize. But a wife should be very wise. She should be a lady. She should be submissive. She should be guiding the house, not controlling the husband. Then the husband Y'all husbands didn't want to get here, but we are. In verse 25, it says, Husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church. Now, that's hard to do. It really is. As Christ loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, word that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. Yes, he that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourished and cherished it, even as the Lord of the church. That's what a husband is supposed to do. He's supposed to love his wife as Christ loved the church. Amen. That don't mean screaming hot, right? I don't mean call her names and daddy and, you know, ugly and stupid. I, I just don't do that. I mean, you might do that and y'all might get along and that's stupid. I don't, I don't care. I, I, I just feel, I'd have to go ahead and ask God to forgive me if I call my wife a name stupid or something. I don't know. I, I mean, I'm supposed to love her like Christ loved the church. 
I realize the church isn't perfect. But I don't think God's sitting up there and that calling us man. Supposed to love her like Christ loved the church. Supposed to nurse, cherish, love her in my own body. You ever heard the joke where the guy said, Well, I told my wife I loved her one time, you know, when he married her 40 years ago. Yeah. Well, we need to tell her off. I probably tell my wife, probably sometimes 15 to 20 times a day, I walk by and say, I love you. I said, You are hot. I said, You are good looking. She wouldn't get married to me. I guess I, I won't say everything I say. And I'll say, And I'll just walk by her several times during the day, and, and the girls say, Daddy, will you please? Will you please? And I'll just tell her 15, 20 times a day, I love you. I say, I love you. And, and she just gets tired of hearing that, huh? But I keep on saying, I'm here with that. Because I love it. But not only should we tell our wives, we need to show our wives. Yes, sir. Ever since we've been dating, now going on 28 years, I guess, I've been opening my car, the car door for my wife. I had some uncles tell me, oh, do quit that act and get married. Ho, 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 ho. Well, I've been doing it 28 years, and oh, ho, 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 I'm laughing now. Um, I do that. I ain't telling you got to do that. I just say I do that because I love her, and that's just what, what I do. I never call her names and say I love you. In this book that I told you we read, The Secret of Loving, another thing that it taught us, it taught me, it says husbands should treat your wife like a queen. And your wife and the wives should treat their husband like a king. Yep. And that's what I've tried to do. Now, she'll tell you, I have failed. I have failed. Big time. Many times. But that's my goal. My goal is to treat her like a queen. And if I treat her like a queen, you know what she normally does? She treats me like a king. And that's what I want. I want to be treated like a king. Yes, Us men want to be treated like a king in our little house, don't we? In our home. Sure. Well, you're not going to get it by cussing and fussing and saying ugly names to one another and throwing things and saying, like this food did not taste right and it's hot and it's cold or, you know, you didn't put no salt and, you know, and all kinds of things. Well, that's not treating her like a queen. Puss of love. Well, as I said, you got to prepare for this journey. The goal is for husbands to treat your wife like a queen and wives treat your husband like a king. The secret is husband work on being a king and wives work on being a queen. And work together. Yes, sir. Work together. And the result will be that the husbands will treat their wife like, a, like the queen that she is and wives will treat their husband like the king that he is. And you'll have a home and not a house. No matter where you are in this journey, whether you started off wrong, whether you got some things you need to work on, maybe you as a husband and wife. You know what? You can get it correctly right here. Amen. You know, you can just let it keep going. And it's going to get worse and worse and worse. I challenge you, best thing in all the world that me and Beth has done As far as our marriage, I believe, is that we put the Lord first. I have no regrets about that. Not one. I made a lot of mistakes, but never going to the house of God, never spending time in God's Word, never praying together, kneeling together, never talking about the things of God. Put Him first. You're going to make a difference in your marriage. That's the only thing that's going to make a difference. You say, well, I don't know. Well... The Bible says he can, and he does. Amen. He can make a difference. Yes, sir. Preacher.
It's like the girl sung tonight about the love of God. I don't understand it. I don't understand why God's been as good to us as He has been. But He sure has been good to us. And we're having the time of our lives. Now the reason for that, you know, uh, a lot of folks kidded us before Nathan and Mitzi, or, well, Mitzi moved out and, uh, a couple years ago now, and, and Nathan and Amanda recently moved out, and the kids are all gone, and, and everybody kidded us about empty nests in it. Here's one thing I've always taught since I got right with the Lord. When I teach about the home, when I teach husbands and wives, rule number one is Nothing ever comes between husband and wife. Amen. Nothing. Or nobody. Amen. That includes that firstborn child. Mm -hmm. That includes that secondborn child. Mm -hmm. That includes that thirdborn child. Nothing or nobody ever separates the husband and the wife. Amen. They are one. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Car seats are a wonderful thing. It puts kids where they belong. In the back. Amen. And the husband and the wife, the mom and dad, belongs together on the front seat. Amen. Why, preacher? Because if you even let a child come between you and your spouse as they're growing up, then when they leave the home, you'll have nothing. Your life has revolved around the wrong thing. Amen. And you will have an empty nest. Hello? Amen. You don't let anything. You don't let the job. <coughs> Nothing. Amen. Nothing comes between you and her or her and him. And you just grow closer and closer and closer and closer and closer together down through the years. Amen. The dog doesn't come between you. Other companions <coughs> in life doesn't come between you. Friendships. There's nobody, just as, as Brother Mark pointed out tonight, look, those of y'all that are sitting here tonight, you're married, your best friend on this earth should be your spouse. Yeah. Right. And if it's not, your marriage is headed for disaster. Yeah. And you do not have a home. Yeah. And you'll never have a home until that relationship is right. Amen. Right. Yeah. Amen. Good preaching tonight. Let's yeah. stand our feet. Ron, if you would please, let's use it all. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Husbands, love your wives even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Do you? Wives, do you treat your husband like he's king? Husbands, do you treat your wife like she's the queen? This is your time. Use it wisely. 